My name is Ian Roberts and I'm a Professor of Public Health at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. I'm going to talk about randomised controlled trials. I only started to appreciate the importance of randomised controlled trials after I had killed a patient. She was a 10 year old girl who had been in a high speed road crash. Her seatbelt had protected her from severe head injury but she had massive internal bleeding. She was awake and talking but deathly pale. My job was to protect her airway. I explained to her that she needed an operation to stop the internal bleeding. She was frightened but I had told her everything would be okay and that I was going to put her to sleep so that she could have the operation. I did put her to sleep but she never woke up. She died in the operating theatre. I know that I didn't really kill her but it felt like I had. After that I'd had enough of treating trauma patients and I decided that I wanted to work on prevention. So I trained in epidemiology, which is the science that underpins public health. Epidemiology is the science of cause and effect. It was only then that I learned about randomized controlled trials, which is the best method that exists of finding out if medical treatments really work. I wish I'd been taught more about randomized controlled trials when I was a medical student, because I would have been a much better doctor. The randomized controlled trial is a truth machine. If you want to find out if a treatment really works, you take a large group of patients and randomly allocate them so half get the new treatment and half get a placebo. The important thing is that chance and chance alone determines which patients go into each group. Then you follow the two groups, measure health outcomes in each group, and by comparing health outcomes, you find out whether or not the treatment works. Later, I realized that many seriously injured patients were receiving all sorts of treatments that had never been properly evaluated in randomized controlled trials. We discovered this when we did careful systematic reviews of the existing evidence from clinical trials. We found out that many treatments were being used because they made sense in theory. The first randomized controlled trial was of a treatment called steroids that was used in patients with severe head injury. The theory was that they reduced brain swelling. They'd been used in clinical practice for about 30 years but we decided to find out if they really worked. And so we did a large scale clinical trial called CRASH, in which 10,000 head injury patients were randomly allocated to get steroids or placebo. The result was quite a surprise. Steroids increased mortality. Thanks to the CRASH trial, doctors stopped using them. The next big trial we did was called CRASH-2, and this looked at the effect of an inexpensive drug called tranexamic acid that's used in the treatment of bleeding. It's a well-established drug, in fact it's sold over the counter for women with heavy periods. Although many injured patients bleed to death, tranexamic acid had never been tested in these patients and was not being used. So we did a randomized controlled trial in 20,000 trauma patients. 10,000 got the treatment, 10,000 got the placebo. We found that tranexamic acid reduced the chances of bleeding to death by about one-sixth and if given early reduced the risk of death by about a third. We estimate that this cheap drug could save about 100,000 lives per year. The London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine offers postgraduate courses in clinical trials that can be studied by distance learning. Finding out how the truth machine works, learning about randomized controlled trials is time well spent. I only wish that I'd done so earlier. I'm sure I would have been a better doctor.